What is going on you guys? I am back yet again with another awesome film and without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? The movie begins with a beautiful scenery of trees and a couple traveling in their car after purchasing a house in upstate New York. When they reach the property, Kate receives a call from her mom who isn't happy that their daughter chose to move to a place that was practically in the middle of nowhere. Kate informs her mom that they still had a lot of unpacking to do and hangs up after promising to call her back later. Kate and Matt start working on unpacking and make a fun game out of it. Matt starts setting up his canvases which really annoys Kate because she knows that once he becomes engrossed in his art, he won't be willing to do anything else. Kate then asks Matt to clear up the junk that was sitting on top of the stairs and he gets right to it. After Matt disposes of the clutter, he notices that there's a door behind the peeling wallpaper and he looks around for the keys and finds a large cross-shaped key in between the junk that he'd thrown out. Matt calls Kate over and then uses the key to open the door, which reveals a large empty room. As soon as the door opens, the light outside of the house suddenly start flickering, scaring the couple. Matt then tells Kate that he's going to call the power company and heads to the living room, and that night, the couple set up their mattresses in the living room and share a bottle of wine, happy with what they achieved. The next morning, Kate sits on Matt's lap as he thinks of a painting idea. Kate gets a call from a client and while she takes it, Matt goes to check out the room that they found and Kate tells Matt that the man from the power company has arrived and he takes him down to the basement to show him the wires. They then find that the wiring of the house was extremely old and unsure of what could be done for power, the man heads out but tells Matt that the previous owners of the house have been murdered. Matt starts doing research on the house and finds out that a couple have been murdered in their newly purchased home and the murderer was a John Doe that was still in prison. After a long and exhausting day, Matt returns to his room seeking solace in a bottle of whiskey. Sighing heavily, he expresses his longing for another drink. Suddenly, a powerful surge of electricity courses through the house, casting everything into dimness. And then, as if by magic, a bottle of whiskey materializes out of thin air. The next morning, Kate awakens to find Matt in a room surrounded by an array of art pieces and bottles of champagne. Bewildered by the sudden transformation, she questions Matt about the source of these newfound treasures, and in response, he encourages her to ask for anything her heart desires. Kate decides to play along and requests a thousand dollars, and once again, the room is engulfed in a surge of power, and to her astonishment, the money materializes before her eyes. Amazed yet still uncertain, Kate decides to push the boundaries further, asking for a million dollars. And just like that, her request is granted, leaving her both frightened and intrigued. Matt, sensing Kate's apprehension, convinces her to embrace this extraordinary opportunity and indulge in her wildest dreams. The couple then embark on a spree, filling their home with all the luxury and desires that they could ever imagine. But as the initial excitement subsides, Kate finds herself grappling with an internal crisis. The notion of having everything that they want without any efforts troubles her deeply. Concerned for his wife's well-being, Matt surprises her by preparing a baby room, suggesting that they try to have a child once again. However, Kate's painful past experience experiences of losing two unborn babies weigh heavily on her heart and she hesitates to embark on the journey again. Matt, seeking clarity, takes a drive to clear his mind and upon his return, he discovers Kate in the room cradling a baby in a crib. Overwhelmed with anger, he insists that they must return the child as it's not the right path to take. Reluctantly, Kate agrees and they both attempt to wish the child away, but to their astonishment, they find themselves unable to do what's been done. The following day, as Kate cares for the baby, Matt revisits the newspaper articles detailing the gruesome killings that occurred in their house. It becomes apparent that the room itself was responsible for driving the killer to commit those horrendous acts, and determined to uncover the truth, Matt pays a visit to the asylum where the killer, known as John Doe, was. In a chilling encounter, Matt reveals his connection to the Springlewood house, and John Doe cryptically informs him that he's been waiting for this moment. When Matt questions the motive behind the killings, John Doe offers no explanation other than the fact that he had no choice. He warns Matt, urging him to leave the house while he still can. Troubled by these revelations, Matt makes his way back home, stopping at a gas station to refuel. To his horror, he discovers that the money in his pocket has turned to ash, and filled with panic, he rushes back to the house, desperately discarding the objects that he once wished for, only to witness them disintegrate into nothingness. Determined to unravel the mysteries of the room, Matt ventures into the depths of the house, smashing through the drywall. As he exposes the inner workings, a tangled web of thick wires come into view, stretching throughout the room and the entire house. Meanwhile, Kate informs Matt of her need to go out, clutching the baby in her arms. Concerned for their safety, Matt warns her against leaving, and ignoring his plea, Kate takes a few steps, and the baby's cry of pain fills the air. 
Overwhelmed by the anguish of his wife and child, Matt rushes to their rescue, bringing the baby back inside the house. In just a few minutes outside, the baby has aged several years and is now a boy that's almost 10. In a moment of reflection, Kate asks Matt to share his knowledge about the house and he reveals the encounter with John Doe and explains that the room functions like a remarkable 3D printer capable of manifesting anything one desires. However, there's a crucial rule. Nothing created within the room can be taken outside as it rapidly ages and ultimately turns into dust. Kate takes on the role of homeschooling her son Shane, teaching him about the wonders of the outside world that he longs to explore further. However, she explains to him that he is sick and that the house is the only place that can keep him safe. One day during breakfast, a delivery truck arrives and Kate goes outside to receive the package. To her surprise, it contained a gun and Matt, intrigued, takes the gun and begins practice target shooting the next day. As the struggle to keep Shane indoors becomes increasingly challenging, the strain on Kate and Matt's marriage grows heavy. Matt seeks saw in his art, while Kate devotes herself to raising a boy who never ages. One day, Shane accidentally wanders into Matt's workroom, dropping a snow globe in his hand when he's startled by Matt's presence. Matt scolds Shane for entering his room, causing Shane to run away. This incident sparks a heated debate between Kate and Matt, leading to a larger fight about Shane's existence as their child. The following day, Matt wakes up to find another snow globe in his workroom, placed next to the broken one. He confronts Kate but she denies any knowledge of it and they rush to the room and discover a breathtaking transformation and they see that the tiny room has transformed into a vast forest with Shane building a snowman. Matt forcibly drags Shane out of the room, locks the door and warns him to never go back inside. Moments later, a call comes in and Shane answers it while Kate and Matt argue about the strange events. Kate overhears Shane talking on the phone and they rush to the room and Matt takes the phone away and demands to know who the caller is. And apparently the caller turns out to be John Doe. Matt asks John Doe if there is a way to stop Shane's aging process and allow him to go outside and John Doe reveals that the only way that this could happen is if the creator dies. Matt struggles to understand whatever he was talking about and John Doe cryptically suggests that if Kate were to die, Shane be free to live outside. He then alludes to the fact that he too was created inside the house. John Doe then reveals a dark truth. Shane's mother shot his father and made him kill her, allowing Shane to live. He poses a question to Matt, leaving him to contemplate his next move, and Kate, overhearing the conversation, runs out of the house initially with the intention of ending her own life, but ultimately regains her senses. Shane, confused and hurt, questions Matt about his own existence, having overheard him say that he was just a figment. In a fit of anger, Matt drags Shane to the door, urging him to test this hypothesis and raising profound questions that shake Shane's perception of reality, and Shane runs back to his room. As Matt's rage subsides, he approaches Shane and apologizes, and Shane asks if Matt could read to him and Matt agrees. When Kate returns home, she finds Matt and Shane asleep, with Matt reading a story to Shane. Upon waking up, Matt sees Kate's return and embraces her, and they sleep in the same room for the first time since Shane entered their lives. The next morning, Shane sneaks into the room and steals the key to the outside door and when Kate and Matt wake up, they realize what happened and they rush to find Shane who is now a young adult. Shane holding a gun confronts them, feeling betrayed by their lies. The gun then goes off but Shane, unfamiliar to how to handle it, misses his target. Kate then approaches him slowly, attempting to calm him down. Matt then seizes the opportunity to knock Shane to the ground and a struggle ensues, during which Kate is also knocked unconscious. She regains consciousness on the couch with someone who appears to be Matt sitting beside her. She asks about Shane's whereabouts and the person explains that Shane was shot and killed during the struggle and when Kate inquires about the body, the person reveals that they took it outside. Matt wakes up in the house but Kate was nowhere to be found and determined he begins bashing the wall, desperate to find her. During breakfast, Kate sits with Shane, who now impersonates Matt and she expresses her desire to leave the house but Shane insists that they cannot go anywhere because they have no jobs and the house provides for them. As Kate watches Shane chew an ice cube, a childhood habit that she used to scold him for, she begins to question the identity of the person in front of her. Matt eventually breaks through the wall and enters the house that Shane has created on the other side. Suspicious but uncertain, Kate's suspicions are confirmed when Shane tries to kiss her, claiming to have seen them do it before. Terrified, she runs away screaming for help and Shane catches up to her and knocks her down. Matt breaks through the window and enters the house just as Shane hears the noise and descends the stairs. Kate, confused about who's who, encounters Matt and Shane and follows closely behind. 
In a moment of recognition, Mac calls her by a name only she would know, confirming his identity, and Kate pushes Shane down the stairs, and they make a run for it. They attempt to escape, but Shane transforms the house into an endless maze, and Matt devises a plan to create decoys, using the clones to distract Shane. They then manage to make it outside the house, and run into the woods seeking refuge in the real world. Shane catches up to them, but Matt opens the door and tricks Shane into stepping outside. Kate then locks the door, and Shane pleads with his mother to open it, as he deteriorates before his eyes, aging rapidly until his final breath. And that is where the movie wraps up. I hope you guys enjoyed this recap, make sure to leave me a like, leave a comment, also subscribe to my channel, I love you guys so much and I promise to see you on my next recap, bye!